Dr. Gail Burstein. I am delighted for us to join us. I'd like to get us started with our afternoon briefing, but I want to begin with a number of important thank yous. I really want to start, actually, by thanking the county executive himself. He has been tireless and decisive in this moment of crisis for our community, and his leadership has been truly inspiring, calling on us to re remember solidarity when necessary, and also scolding us into behaving better also when necessary, and I really want to thank him. I also would like to thank you, Dr. Gale. Truly, it's been an honor to call you a colleague, an honor to call you a friend, and it is really your dedicated service and professional leadership that will help us prevail in this crisis. Thank you. I want to thank the Erie County workforce. The county executive has mentioned it many times, but you cannot imagine the dedicated workforce in this building, particularly the folks in the health department, but not just in the health department, literally in every department pulling together to help our community make it through. They help remind us what the meaning and significance of the word public service is, and I want to express my gratitude to every Erie County employee. For those of you that are part of the essential workforce, our healthcare workers, our first responders, our essential municipal employees, our daycare workers, our workers that are manning all of our grocery stores, our convenience stores, the truck drivers that are providing food to our grocery stores, you are the backbone of this crisis. You are helping us to prevail and you are getting up every day in the face of the virus and facing it head on. Uh, we want to thank you for your dedicated service. And finally, friends, I want to thank all of you. We cannot forget that in the middle of all of this, the people who have the most power to influence how we can change it is all of us at home, practicing those non-pharmaceutical interventions that Dr. Gale has been educating us on for the last several weeks. We have the power to help bend the curve, friends, and we will do that by heeding all of the warnings, by washing our hands, by not touching our face, by keeping social distancing, and by maintaining the standards that Dr. Gale expects from us. Um, so with that, friends, I'll get us started on our PowerPoint presentation, and I just simply want to remind you that this PowerPoint is current as of the time it was prepared, which is about an hour ago. So any information here is subject to change. As you know, this situation rapidly evolves, and we need to understand that the documents here are current now, but they may not be uh, current even just a few hours from now. So with that, Dr. Gale, I will turn it over to you. Thank you. So um, just want to give you an update on our testing. So samples are being uh, collected by our Erie County Department of Health uh, based um, New York State Department of Health protocols and on, on a specific set of people that need prior approval by the Erie County Health Department and by physicians. So those include healthcare workers and those uh, posing risks to the healthcare workforce uh, like patients. Um, congregate living settings for vulnerable populations like nursing homes, prisons, group homes, etc. Um, people in law enforcement, our first responders, and then also um, uh, if any type of perinatal symptoms uh, with around the mother uh, who has a, has a young child. Um, those individuals are all eligible for testing and we are testing them. Next. So um, just in terms of community testing, we are not no longer able to or do we feel we need to offer widespread testing to any individual in the community. First of all, um, this is not recommended by New York State Department of Health. Um, they have, we have similar criteria mm -hmm. to the New York State Health Department of who should be tested and who may be able to forego testing because we already know we have community spread. So uh, people that, um, that we would not uh, recommend for testing include people who are under quarantine, who develop some mild illness, people who are exposed um, and they know severe underlying health conditions and they're not severely ill, um, people who are asymptomatic, so they have no symptoms, they have no feelings of illness, who are contacts of confirmed cases, and people who are mildly ill, 
um, who do not live in any congregate setting. So that's, you know, most people in the community that are either uh, contacts to somebody who has COVID-19 or suspected COVID-19 or somebody who has, uh, you know, in illnesses or just, you know, symptoms that could be consistent with COVID-19, you know, we're, we are not going to test because we know that it is here in the community. So Quest and LabCorp are also doing testing. And so there is an opportunity for people who do want to test and they don't qualify with our criteria, the New York State Health Department's criteria, to try to go through their primary care provider to get a test by uh, Core or LabCorp, uh, Quest or LabCorp. However, I just want to caution that um, many primary care providers um, do not have the viral co uh, specimen collection kits, just like we have a shortage, um, they're also facing a, sh facing a shortage, and they also, many providers don't have the, per, uh, the appropriate personal protective equipment, just like we're facing shortages, so are they. So uh, again, the opportunities to get tested in the community are, are really limited. So now I wanna give you an update on the number of, uh, of uh, cases, uh, deaths, and people in isolation, and those who have recovered. So as of today at noon, there were 166 uh, total positive cases, and that's from all the laboratories. Our, our lab, our County Public Health Lab, uh, Kaleida's Lab, uh, Quest, LabCorp, New York State, and uh, CDC. So unfortunately, um, two people have died. Um, nine people have recovered, and there are currently 155 people in isolation, which is the number of people who've test positive minus the number of people who have died and minus the number of people who have recovered. So as of uh, March 25th, uh, yesterday evening, there were 31 individuals who were hospitalized in local hospitals, and uh, we imagine that that is a higher number today. Um, we will be able to, to pull those data from a New York State website uh, uh, earlier, early in the evening. Next. So um, we're asking the community to monitor themselves for signs of symptoms of COVID-19. Because as a health department, um, you know, we, we just don't have the capacity to monitor everybody who is at risk. So uh, what you should be looking for to monitor yourself for COVID-19 is a fever. And so we're calling a fever 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher and either a cough or shortness of breath, like difficulty breathing. So if you have a fever and either a cough or difficulty breathing with shortness of breath, then uh, you have symptoms that are consistent with a COVID-19 infection. So you ask, what do I do? Well, um, first of all, you should isolate yourself at home, away from anybody else, away from anybody in your household, in their home. So you wanna stay in one room and hopefully you'll have access to one bathroom where nobody else have, has access to. If you, all, if you share a bathroom with another person or more, you have to make sure you really wipe it down with disinfected every time you go in there and use it. And then if, um, you know, if you start to feel like very ill, difficulty breathing or, you know, very high temperature and, or if you have, you know, questions about your health, you can call your primary health care provider. And if you feel that you're seriously ill and you may need hospitalization, uh, you can go to um, uh, call at either an uh, emergency department or an urgent care center. So again, any type of healthcare facility with, uh, for somebody who has uh, symptoms uh, consistent with COVID-19 should call first, whether it's your primary care doctor or an urgent care doctor or the, uh, the uh, emergency department, call first so they can prepare. So because first of all, many times they can give you information that you need to take care of yourself better without actually having to go into the office. And then the second reason is that um, when you come in to any type of healthcare facility, you are uh, you know, potentially exposing other people in the office, in the waiting room, um, other healthcare workers who don't have the appropriate personal protective equipment. So they wanna be ready for you so they can, everybody can be wearing the equipment that they need to protect themselves, you know, protect our healthcare workers, and they can usher you right back into to a room by yourself and so you don't expose any people. So it's not that they don't wanna see you, it says that they wanna make sure that you're prepared and that they're prepared to care for you appropriately and protect themselves. So next. 
There are many things, friends, that we are doing beyond, of course, uh, all of the work um, associated with community uh, self-monitoring to help respond to this crisis. And one of the most uh, other critical things that the county has tried to support through the activation of an emergency child care task force has been to ensure that our essential personnel have the daycare that they need in order to go to work. As you know, uh, this problem was exacerbated by the need to close the schools. So last Sunday when it was announced that the schools would be closed until April 20th, we know that a number of essential personnel in our healthcare system were not able to report to work. The county executive has tasked myself and Commissioner Marie Cannon of the Department of Social Services with forming this task force and we are very pleased to be partnering with the Child Care Resource Network to help ensure that we get this need addressed in the community. The best thing that you can do is if you are an essential worker and you need child care services, please contact the Child Care Resource Network at the website here, westernnewyorkchildren.org, um, and fill out their survey, their parent survey. You can identify on the survey what hours of child care you need. You can also identify the age of your children uh, so that uh, we can, the Child Care Resource Network can match you with a child care provider in, uh, in your community. We are also encouraging the child care providers that are still open at this point to also register with the Child Care Resource Network. And it is with this survey of both the parents that help us understand the need as well as the child care centers that we are able to make that very important match so we can continue uh, providing the kind of support our essential workers need. The next thing I wanted to share um, as many of you know, our, uh, our community has defined uh, essential services to include uh, our grocery store workers. The governor did include that as part of the grocery, uh, sorry, as part of the essential workforce. And there are a number of jobs uh, being recruited at Wegmans presently. Um, there are other employers that are looking to hire people at this time. Uh, you can see the websites here, uh, sorry, on the next page. And we encourage you to, uh, to contact, um, well, I'm not sure where the websites are. Uh, we will put them uh, live on our website uh, momentarily. But in any case, Catholic Health is hiring, Kaleida Health is hiring, Wegmans is hiring, and we encourage you to go to their websites and apply for those jobs. The last thing we wanted to uh, underscore today is that our COVID-19 call center remains operational. You are encouraged to call our hotline if you have questions at 858-2929. We are open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. There is a high call volume on our hotline number, so we want to just encourage you to be patient and expect some wait time. We're asking that the public call with your real life questions rather than your <coughs> hypothetical questions. And we want to refer you, of course, to uh, the locations we have uh, readily uh, provided uh, good, reliable, accurate information. That includes the county's website at erie.gov backslash COVID-19. It also includes the New York State Department of Health website. And finally, of course, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control website as well. Uh, before we take questions, friends, I want to take a minute and thank Kendra Schmidt from Deaf Access Services. Uh, they have been providing uh, sign language to, uh, to the county uh, so we can ensure that our um, daily briefings are brought to the widest possible public uh, as possible, and we want to thank you. I think uh, with that, we will gladly entertain some questions from our community as well as from any local media that is joining us on Facebook Live. Thank you, Deputy County Executive. We got several questions from WGRZ and the reporters there. The first question from WGRZ, how many people are waiting for a test? What's the number of presumptive cases in Erie County? So the question is, um, how many people are waiting for a test? And then uh, what is the presumptive uh, number of cases in Erie County? 
Um, well, first of all, the um, uh, the number of whoops, I have to get the the number of um, people that are. Um, so do, when you mean the number of people are waiting for a test that are still have specimens collected and they're waiting to be run? Uh, this says how many people are waiting for a test and what's the number of presumptive cases? Um, well, first of all, um, we, you know, we are, um, every day we are collecting information about, um, from people who are asking to, uh, to get tested and we screen them for our criteria. And if they do meet our criteria, you know, we still are offering um, a specimen collection drive-through clinic. And, um, and we're pretty much right now able to schedule them the next day. We usually have about, um, four, you know, about um, four, you know, 20 to 40 uh, people that we are, uh, are testing um, every day. Uh, and then for uh, the right now with the laboratory, the turnaround time is about 24 to 48 hours. So, uh, so um, those, those people will be waiting for a test. So I'm not really sure what the backlog is now of number of people who are um, we're waiting to, uh, to get the results. But we, um, you know, we have caught up with a, much of the backlog and we, people can expect to get their, specim their, their test results in about 24 to 48 hours now that we've caught up with our backlog. And in terms of the, uh, the estimates of the number of people that are infected with our community, is um, you know we don't really have a good handle on on the exact proportion. The um, we know that there is community spread. We know that um, we many people are infected in the community, uh, and I think that you know whatever that number is, whatever that proportion is, um, I think we just have to assume that that there's probably going to be somebody you come in contact with that's uh, that is going to be infected with COVID-19. I mean, you know, we've heard, um, we've read estimates that, that um, you know, by the end of this infection, this outbreak, you know, somewhere between 50 to 80 percent of our population will become infected. Again, we'll, you know, we'll have to see, hopefully, when as we're being more aggressive with our non-pharmaceutical interventions, with hand washing, you know, physical or social distancing, you know, not touching our hands, you know, keeping all our uh, frequently touched surfaces in the environment uh, clean, staying away from sick people, and we're sick, staying away from other people, will help uh, keep that percentage low. However, it's you know we've have never had experienced this uh, virus in our community, so we'll have to see what happens. Okay, here's another one from WGRZ. What can people do if their doctor is confused about the process of getting a test ordered? So uh, if, um, if healthcare providers have any questions, they are free to, uh, to call our, um, our helpline and there's a, a, a special um, uh, prompt. A, yeah, prompt, thank you, for, um, for physicians' questions. Um, and then also we have information on our Erie County Health T Site webpage. And if, um, if individuals have questions, again, they can call 858-2929 and, um, and, and get those questions answered. One from Maria. One from Maria. Um, so we've gotten a number of questions both today and in our email uh, about uh, daycare and child care providers. Uh, we're wondering if there's any financial relief or any, you know, what are their options uh, if they have a child care center, which is now trying to stay open for essential workers, but because parents are home, um, you know, aren't sending their kids to daycare, and now they're struggling to pay, pay the bills. Sure, it's an important question. So the question was asking about, um, about both uh, child care uh, providers who are struggling to stay open and whether or not there might be some financial relief uh, for child care providers, as well as any support for, um, for I think, those families who may be in need of child care. Uh, it is an important question. So the first thing I want to repeat is to remind folks, please, to go on to the Child Care Resource Network uh, website and fill out the survey. Uh, both parents can do that, as well as uh, child care centers. Uh, the reason that's important is because we needed to find a central repository for all of the information that would help uh, help us understand the need uh, for child care for essential workers as well as those centers that are able to provide support. 
Um, as for the funding question, uh, later today on Erie County DSS's website, there will be information about the variety of waivers that Erie County Department of Social Services has successfully gotten approved by the State Office of Fi uh, Ch Children and Family Services, OCFS, uh, that will support families who were previously uh, receiving child care subsidy assistance. Um, many of the previous thresholds on that have been lifted. Um, there are other uh, 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 waivers that DSS has successfully um, gotten approved by OCFS that will support families in need of childcare. So I do encourage you to get the specifics on that uh, from DSS's website. Uh, earlier today, we also worked on a video with Erie County Department of Social Services uh, to capture much of that information. And in the coming days, we will look to have that information distributed broadly. The only other thing that I can offer uh, to the, the folks that are asking this is we understand that there may be a time when a number of child care providers have to temporarily close their doors while we take the time to properly assess the need. We know that many child care providers previously had uh, children in their um, census that were not the children of essential workers. And right now, those children are home with their parents. So we understand that many of them are struggling to keep their doors open and may need to close for a time period until we can better get a handle uh, on the need. So I would just ask that you be patient, that you uh, register with the Child Care Resource Network, and, um, and then the Child Care Resource Network will work to connect the families that are in need of child care uh, uh, with your center. The only other thing I might add there is I want to thank the child care centers. More than anything, the people that are essential workers in our community cannot do their jobs without you. And it should not be understated how important your role is in the recovery of this, uh, of this uh, pandemic. So we are grateful for your service. We know that like many of the restaurants and bars and other businesses in our communities, you too are struggling. We know that you are small business owners like so many others in this community struggling and we want to continue to thank you uh, for all of the services you are providing. And if um, I can just put in a Please. plug. So parents, if um, you are lucky enough to have access to childcare, if you're an essential employee and, and we're, you're able to get linked up with a daycare center, a childcare provider to take care of your children, remember, they are very important part of our workforce. So if your child is ill, uh, that means that, that your child really needs to stay home with you and, and you need to take a day off or, or so from work to, to uh, stay home with your child. You know, if uh, you send your kids to daycare when they're sick, then the daycare workers are going to become ill and then they may not be able to keep their doors open for that reason. They won't have the staffing for those child care centers. So remember, um, you know, we have to think about our child care providers and keep our kids home when they're sick so our child care providers can stay healthy. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Gale, truly. All right, this one's for Dr. Berkey. So um, a resident has been waiting uh, for their test results and they, <clears throat> they say they need a doctor's note uh, to return to where their employers are probably going to have a doctor's note to return to work. So they're wondering, uh, do they also need uh, a note from the Department of Health or does the quarantine order that they were issued, is that sufficient? So uh, the question is, um, there's an individual in the community who's waiting for their test results because they want to return home, uh, so they want to return to work. And so they're asking what they need to have to return to work. So um, every case is different. And so if individuals are tested because they're a contact, a close contact to a known or suspected case, they may not be able to return to work uh, because their test is negative, because they have been exposed. And so um, depending on their, uh, their job situation and the exposure, you know, they may, may need to stay in quarantine up to 14 days. So that's something that um, they can uh, discuss with the health department when, um, when uh, they receive their test result. And there's something that also they can talk, discuss with their health care provider. Um, this is for uh, Maria, uh, so we have a question. Please tell me how to get an extension on my unemployment.
employment. It just ended early this month. Um, what resources are there available for unemployment? Uh, sure. I, I also, the question was about unemployment. Um, what resources are available for unemployment and uh, how to possibly get an extension on unemployment benefits. I want to just say um, we understand that the number of applications for unemployment has gone up immensely. Uh, we know also in Erie County Department of Social Services the number of applications for food stamps has gone up immensely. We understand that people are in need. Uh, the federal government, as you know, has been working very expeditiously through a, a stimulus package that would extend unemployment benefits. Um, so people are encouraged to contact the New York State Department of Labor. All of the unemployment benefits are through the New York State Department of Labor. Do we have a website for them, friends? Labor.ny.gov. That is www.labor.ny.gov. So L-A-B-O-R dot N-Y dot G-O-V. So we encourage you uh, to reach out to the New York State Department of Labor um, and with uh, you know, a little bit of continued hard work on the part of the federal government, hopefully that stimulus package will be coming for people that have lost their job as a result of this crisis. So we got a question um, for Dr. Bernstein. What is the current capacity at local hospitals? Uh, well, the question is, what is the current capacity of, uh, of local hospitals? So, um, you know, we are looking at that with the, working with them to, um, to look at increasing their capacity. So um, we know that right, you know, right now they are uh, below capacity and they're able to uh, admit new patients. And we also know that they are very, trying very hard to comply with the governor's order to increase their capacity for hospitalization and in uh, intensive care unit beds and ventilators by 100%. So that is uh, actually a moving target. So uh, right now we are still below our capacity. Our capacity is increasing and we also know that our need will also be increasing. So that's why it's really important for everybody to, uh, to um, practice these non-pharmaceutical interventions to hopefully slow the community spread and keep our numbers down uh, below the, 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 you know, the, the capacity of our hospitals so that everybody can receive the health care that they need. One more. This one's for uh, Maria and uh, Dr. Bernstein, you can touch on this too. Um, when you're spending so much time for essential workers who are spending a lot of time at their jobs and then uh, the other folks who are spending a lot of time at home, what are some good, um, good things to do to make sure that your mental health is staying well, I'm sure the doctor would not recommend drinking. Uh, I bet that's not on the top of the list. Um, so friends, I think it is important to do all of the things that help keep us sane in stressful time periods. We have to take care of ourselves. We have to get enough rest. We have to get some physical exercise. We need to practice uh, meditation if that's um, uh, in your wheelhouse of things that you have done in the past, it now might be an excellent time to revisit that. Uh, all of the drinking plenty of water, um, not alcohol, uh, are some of the things that, that really help keep us safe and sane. What would you add, Dr. Gale? Uh, well, I think um, you know we're all kind of isolated. We're you know asked to stay at home and, and not congregate with friends. And so that can be rather lonely. So I recommend you know reach out to your friends or you know uh, somebody that you haven't been in contact with for a while. I mean, if you have time on your hands, you could you know call them, uh, text them, um, you know contact them through Facebook. I mean, you know again, I think human communication is really important because unfortunately we you know can't have touch like we would we had in the past. Uh, because of the, the concern with COVID-19 transmission. However, there are other ways we can communicate and just because we can't go and physically see somebody or, or um, be in a large crowd doesn't mean that we can't contact them in other ways. So just still want to help people think about some maybe non-traditional ways to, uh, to reach out to your friends and, and family members and you know, by you know, calling, texting. I mean, it's really nice to hear somebody's voice that you have, haven't heard in a while. And, uh, and remember, uh, know that you are not alone. We are all facing this together. 
and those people that you're thinking about that you miss are uh, going through the same thing. So you know, give them a shout out, give them a call, text them, um, communicate by Facebook or, or Instagram, however you do. And um, and you know, remember, um, you might be in a room alone, you might be in quarantine or isolation. However, you are not alone. There are people there that are also thinking about you, and uh, and just reach out to them. Uh, thanks so much for that, Dr. Gale. You may recall that um, last week the county executive hosted the director of crisis services here as part of his daily briefing. And she talked a lot about making sure that you do not feel alone and that you are reaching out to your family members. The ability to communicate is part of what makes us human. It is part of our humanity and it is a, an important thing to remember during this difficult time as well. So even if we are physically isolated from one another, we are not socially isolated or emotionally isolated from one another uh, as our friend from Crisis Services said. And maybe um, we can ask you to look up the phone number for Crisis Services and we will post that again here momentarily. Mm -hmm. Next question. Uh, here's a question from the media. How long until the testing kit Senator Schumer says the funding bill has released from the federal stockpile will arrive here in Erie County? Uh, we, we don't have a way to predict that. We're, um, we're waiting and we're hoping and we're anticipating that we will receive um, the viral specimen collection kits and then also the reagents that we need to, uh, to conduct the tests. So those are all important. And remember, we, you know, people I know are just a, you know, really um, a concentrated focus on the tests. And the tests, they tell us that you know, at the time when you get tested, you're either positive or negative. So a negative test doesn't mean that you won't become positive in the near future. Remember, the incubation period we know is 14 days. And so if you get tested now and you're negative, and you were exposed, say, seven days ago, it doesn't mean that within the next week you won't become positive. So that's why it's important for us all to monitor ourselves and for people who could have been exposed, who were exposed or um, to a known case or a suspected case, stay in that quarantine for a full 14 days, you know, regardless of what your test results are. Remember, it's just a, a result for one point of time. So, um, but we, and we will make sure that the people who need to get tested because they're in the healthcare workforce or they're another uh, essential employee like our first responders or EMTs um, or, or uh, like our pharmacists um, or you know, others that we you know, are like uh, people that are keeping the electricity on, people, people that are keeping the water running. You know, we wanna make sure that they get the information they need to, uh, to return to work and that would include a test. So you know, people that need to get tested will get tested. You know, we're working with our, with our partners um, at, um, in the communities just to, in, in the, our government partners to, to try to get the resources we need to continu continue that testing. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gale. I, I want to just take a minute and um, offer some of the phone numbers we didn't have moments ago. Uh, the phone number for crisis services, again, to ensure that you are getting the mental health support that you need, 834-3131. Uh, again, 834-3131. Earlier, we talked about job opportunities at a number of local employers who are hiring. I did not have some of their web info available at the time. Wegmans is hiring, and folks are encouraged to apply at jobs.wegmans.com. That's jobs.wegmans.com. Another question that came up earlier uh, was about our unemployment, um, uh, folks that might be facing unemployment and wish to issue and an make an unemployment claim with the Department of Labor. There are other folks actually who are still being required to report to work when their job is not an essential uh, part of the workforce. And that is something we also want to guard against. The New York State Attorney General has set up a complaint line, an anonymous complaint line for those types of issues. And we would encourage you to contact the AG's office at area code 212-416-8700. Uh, we've got one more question. Uh, yes, uh, so this is from a resident. Uh, how aggressively are social services uh, collecting money during this time? Now, um, 
I don't have an answer to that question. Uh, thank you very much for that. I will connect with our social services commissioner and ask her to uh, post some of that information on DSS's website. Uh, I will invite really everyone in the public to use the county's website uh, extensively. We, each of the departments, particularly during this time when you are, um, when we are handling so many things uh, uh, remotely rather than in person, we are trying to make the most current information available on our website and we will encourage you to go to Erie County's website uh, for the answer to that question. I think I'll just close us out uh, by offering a quote. Um, Award-winning author L.R. Konst has some great things to say and she uh, reminded us not terribly long ago a great quote, do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. All things break and all things can be mended not with time, as they say, but with intention. So let us, friends, intentionally go out and fight this coronavirus. Let us engage in that fight intentionally by social distancing, by disinfecting our commonly touched surfaces, by not touching our face, by remembering proper respiratory etiquette, by monitoring your temperature daily, by doing all of the things. Dr. Gale, who is Carole. everybody's family mm. doctor at this point, uh, uh, let us go intentionally to fight this virus and live to see us through the other side of it. Thank you so much.